Starship's ninth flight crashed because of one critical problem. Its attitude control system failed completely. The ship tumbled out of control and was lost. But that crash just revealed SpaceX's most brilliant solution yet. They're switching to hot gas thrusters. Why does this matter? These new thrusters are five times more powerful and don't depend on main tank pressure. When two starships need to dock in orbit for refueling, this is what makes it possible. But here's the real question. Can this same system get us to Mars? Let's dive right in. So what really went wrong during that ninth flight? The answer reveals everything about why this breakthrough matters. The moment everything went silent. Picture this starship is cruising through space at 17,500 miles per hour. Everything looks perfect. Then, a tiny leak begins. Just a small breach in the propellant system. But in space, small problems become deadly fast. As the leak continues, main tank pressure drops. The attitude control system, those crucial thrusters that keep the ship stable, they need that pressure to work. No pressure, no control. It's that simple and that terrifying. During re-entry, when precision matters most, the thrusters went silent. A 250-ton spacecraft started tumbling like a broken toy. The crew would have felt completely helpless. The ship was lost. But here's what SpaceX discovered from that disaster. The current system has a fatal design flaw that no one saw coming. The shocking truth about current technology. Every spacecraft needs attitude control. Think of it like power steering in your car. You can't drive safely without it. Most use something called cold gas thrusters. These systems are basically fancy compressed air cans. Simple? Yes. Reliable? Usually. Powerful enough for a Mars rocket? Absolutely not. The numbers are brutal. Cold gas thrusters deliver 50 to 70 seconds of specific impulse. That's like getting 20 miles per gallon when you desperately need 100. For tiny satellites, this works fine. For Starship, it's like trying to steer a freight train with a birthday candle. SpaceX knew this. Back in 2021, Elon actually announced plans for methane oxygen hot gas thrusters. Real rocket engines for attitude control. The performance would be incredible. Then something strange happened. Those plans vanished overnight. No explanation, no updates, just gone. What made SpaceX abandon a superior technology? The answer connects directly to what happened on Flight 9, the elegant solution that became a death trap. Instead of hot gas thrusters, SpaceX chose something called Ulage venting. This system is actually brilliant, until it isn't. Here's how it works. Cryogenic fuels naturally boil off as they warm up. This creates pressure in the tanks. SpaceX takes this escaping gas and channels it through nozzles for attitude control. It's elegant engineering. You're using gas that would escape anyway. No separate fuel systems, no complex combustion chambers. Even Falcon 9 uses this technique for final positioning. The gas isn't actually cold. It's quite hot from the warming fuel. Higher temperature means higher pressure, which means more thrust. Clever, right? But Flight 9 exposed the deadly weakness. When main tanks lose pressure, the Ulage system dies too. It's like having brakes that only work when your engine is running perfectly. One small leak killed the entire attitude control system. This cannot happen on a crewed Mars mission. The game-changing breakthrough. This is where hot gas thrusters change everything. These aren't just better, they're revolutionary. Hot gas thrusters are essentially miniature rocket engines. They burn methane and oxygen in tiny combustion chambers, just like Raptor engines, but smaller. The performance difference is staggering. 300 seconds of specific impulse versus 70 seconds for cold gas. That's not incremental improvement. That's five times more efficient. But efficiency isn't even the most important part. These thrusters operate completely independently from main propellant tanks. They have their own fuel supply, their own pressure systems, their own everything. If the main tanks leak, if ullage pressure drops, if everything goes wrong, hot gas thrusters keep working. True redundancy, true reliability. Now picture this scenario. Two massive starships need to dock in orbit for refueling. They're traveling at 17,500 miles per hour, 400 miles above Earth. The slightest error destroys billions of dollars of hardware. 
This is where hot gas thrusters don't just shine, they're absolutely essential. The precision and power needed for orbital refueling simply isn't possible with current systems. But there's an even bigger reason why this technology is crucial. A reason that most people completely miss. The Mars reality that changes everything. Mars doesn't have nitrogen. It doesn't have helium. The thin Martian atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide with traces of other gases. Traditional spacecraft attitude control depends on nitrogen or hypergolic fuels, toxic chemicals that ignite on contact. Neither can be manufactured on Mars with current technology. You'd need to ship every ounce from Earth. For a six-month journey, plus Mars surface operations, plus the return trip, we're talking about massive fuel requirements that make missions economically impossible. But methane and oxygen? Mars has everything needed to produce both. The atmosphere provides carbon dioxide for methane production through the Sabatier process. Water ice, abundant on Mars, provides oxygen through electrolysis. This isn't theoretical. It's the foundation of SpaceX's entire Mars colonization plan. Hot gas thrusters using methane oxygen don't just solve the attitude control problem, they solve the sustainability problem. A Mars-based starship can manufacture its own thruster fuel using local resources. Without this capability, Mars missions remain short-term expeditions. With it, permanent settlement becomes possible. The Hidden Technical Challenge But creating reliable hot gas thrusters isn't just scaling down Raptor engines. The challenges are uniquely difficult. These thrusters must restart instantly, reliably, hundreds of times per mission. They need to throttle from barely detectable thrust to maximum power in milliseconds. The combustion chamber experiences extreme thermal cycling, from the vacuum of space to burning rocket fuel, then back to vacuum, over and over. Traditional rocket engines aren't designed for this punishment. They're built to ignite once, burn steadily, then shut down. Hot gas thrusters need to be like the engine in your car, reliable start-stop operation thousands of times. SpaceX actually conducted secret tests of these systems years ago. The results were promising, but revealed unexpected challenges. How do you prevent combustion instability in a thruster that's constantly cycling? How do you ensure reliable ignition in zero gravity with varying fuel temperatures? These aren't just engineering problems. They're the difference between successful orbital refueling and catastrophic failure in space. The orbital refueling challenge nobody talks about. Let's be brutally honest about what orbital refueling actually means. Two starships, each the size of a 20-story building, must perform a precision dance in the vacuum of space. The tanker ship approaches the destination vehicle. Perfect alignment is crucial. Even tiny errors can bend or break the docking mechanism. Transfer lines must connect flawlessly while both vehicles orbit Earth every 90 minutes. The forces involved are enormous. Starship weighs 250 tons when fueled. If attitude control fails during docking approach, the collision would create a debris field that could threaten the International Space Station. Current Ulage thrusters simply don't have the authority for this operation. They're like trying to parallel park a semi-truck using birthday candles for propulsion. Hot gas thrusters provide the precise, powerful control needed to make orbital refueling not just possible, but routine and safe. But what happens when something goes wrong? Because in space, something always goes wrong. The backup system that could save lives. Traditional spacecraft have redundant systems. Primary attitude control fails. Backup takes over. But Starship's current Olage system has a single point of failure. Main tank pressure. Lose that pressure through a leak, a valve failure, or system malfunction and you lose all attitude control. There's no backup. You're helpless. Hot gas thrusters change this equation completely. They operate with independent fuel supplies, separate from main propellant tanks. True redundancy. This isn't just about mission success. Future starships will carry crews to Mars. If something goes wrong during the six-month journey, or during critical Mars orbit insertion, or during the terrifying descent to the Martian surface, Hot gas thrusters could mean the difference between coming home and being stranded 140 million miles from Earth. The crew survival implications are staggering. The manufacturing reality nobody discusses. Here's what most analyses completely miss. 
Hot gas thrusters require revolutionary manufacturing changes. Each thruster needs its own combustion chamber, fuel injectors, control valves, and ignition systems. Multiply that by dozens of thrusters per vehicle, and you're talking about massive complexity increases. SpaceX would need entirely new production lines, new testing facilities, new quality control procedures. Every component must be validated for space's harsh environment, then proven across hundreds of different mission profiles. The engineering challenge? Manageable for SpaceX's talent level. The manufacturing and validation challenge? Enormous and time-consuming. All while Starship is already flying test missions with current systems. The pressure to not delay the Mars timeline is intense. The secret test results they won't discuss. What SpaceX isn't saying publicly tells the real story. Those early hot gas thruster tests happened years ago under controlled conditions. The basic technology worked. But space is different. Thermal cycling from 400 degrees below zero to combustion temperatures, vibration during launch, contamination from other systems, long-term storage in the vacuum of space. Recent subtle changes to Starship's exterior suggest ongoing development. New vent locations, modified thruster fairings. These aren't random design changes. They're iterative improvements based on testing and analysis. The question, are they perfecting ullage thrusters or preparing for complete system replacement? The performance numbers that matter for Mars. Let's break down what hot gas thrusters actually deliver for Mars missions. Five times the efficiency means five times less fuel needed for attitude control over a multi-year mission. For a Mars mission lasting 26 months, including the journey there, surface operations and return trip, that translates to thousands of pounds of fuel savings. Fuel that can become life support supplies, scientific equipment, or habitat components. But efficiency isn't everything. These thrusters also deliver five times more thrust authority when you need it most. During high wind landings on Mars, emergency orbital maneuvers, or precision docking operations, that extra power could save the mission. The combination makes previously impossible operations routine. Complex multi-ship orbital choreography, precision landings in difficult terrain, extended missions with minimal fuel reserves, all become not just possible, but safe and reliable. The timeline pressure that could break everything. Here's the brutal reality. Every month spent perfecting hot gas thrusters is a month that Starship isn't flying operational missions. SpaceX faces impossible timeline pressure. NASA wants lunar missions. The Pentagon wants satellite deployment capabilities. Commercial customers want orbital infrastructure. Everyone wants Starship operational now, not in five years after extensive thruster development. Yet without hot gas thrusters, the most important missions, Mars colonization, large-scale orbital refueling, permanent space infrastructure, might not be achievable with acceptable risk levels. It's the classic engineering dilemma. Perfect the design or start flying with what you have and iterate. So here's what we know. SpaceX's hot gas thruster breakthrough doesn't just fix Starship's attitude control problem. It unlocks orbital refueling, makes Mars missions sustainable, and could determine whether humanity becomes multi-planetary in our lifetime. But the real question isn't whether this technology works. It's whether SpaceX can perfect it fast enough to stay ahead of China, meet NASA's timeline, and launch the Mars era before competitors catch up. The next few Starship flights will tell us everything. Watch for subtle changes in thruster placement, new test procedures, and how they handle attitude control during critical phases. Because if they nail this, we're about to witness the most important space breakthrough since the moon landing. If they don't, well, Mars might have to wait another generation. What do you think? Is SpaceX pushing too hard too fast? Or is this exactly the kind of bold engineering that gets us to Mars? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to stay ahead of the space race, hit that subscribe button. The next chapter of human spaceflight is being written right now. All four parachutes failed. SpaceX Dragon is falling at 300 miles per hour toward the ocean. Four astronauts inside. No backup plan. Or is there?
NASA just revealed Dragon's secret weapon, Super Draco engines. Eight thrusters firing 128,000 pounds of thrust in the final seconds before impact. This backup system was shelved for a decade because NASA called it too risky. Now it's actively flying on missions and has already proven itself in real tests. The same engines blast Dragon 1,500 meters high during emergencies can now fire downward to save lives during landing disasters. But here's the crazy part. Most people don't even know this exists. How does it actually work? And why is this backup better than anything else out there? Let's dive right in.